Welcome to the Asia Financial Forum webinar. Today's topic is the um, future of fintech in Hong Kong. So, um, first, of all, uh, first of all, let me thank Hong Kong Trade Development Center uh, Council to really um, um, organize this event. And uh, I'm very honored to be your moderator of today. So just to introduce myself, I'm Gary Ng, a partner of PwC. So over the past 20 years, I've been advising my financial services client in Hong Kong mainly uh, to really, uh, as part of their digital transformation. And only in the past few years, it's been the most exciting in my career uh, because um, a lot of uh, transformation in the industry has been happening, like um, the faster payment system, like the store value facilities, E-Trade Connect, Open API, and the more recent virtual banks and virtual insurance. Those are really happening and transforming the industry. So a lot of industry players like myself, uh, really witnessed the development of the fintech industry in Hong Kong. So, and um, today we have uh, two really star speakers. So I would like to introduce, uh, without any particular order, but uh, to my right, Professor KG Chen. Mm. So he was the Secretary of the Financial Services and also the Treasury of the Hong Kong government. And more recently, he is now the Chairman of a virtual bank, one of the virtual banks in mm -hmm. Hong Kong, uh, Vida Bank. And also, he is a professor of the Hong Kong USD. And also, to my left, so we have a Dr. George Lam. So he is the chairman of the Cyberport Hong Kong, so a hub and also the incubator for a lot of tech firms in Hong Kong. And uh, he is also uh, the Hong Kong Trade Development Council's um, Bell and Row, and also Greater Bay Area Committee. Uh, Committee, and also the uh, Smart City and Connectivity Task Force. Okay, so I think um, today uh, I would love to hear a lot of uh, insights and also yeah, the wisdom from you two very star mm -hmm. speaker. And uh, just to start off, uh, can I ask uh, Professor Chen, so what FinTech means to you in terms of affecting your daily life and also in yourself and also in your organization? Well, uh, I think FinTech to, to me and to, I think to most people, I think it means uh, convenience. Uh, it means uh, instantaneous uh, information as well as uh, very uh, you know, efficient feedback and, uh, uh, and a way to get into all kinds of uh, financial services. Um, now, of course, I mean, just, you know, I, mean I, think, I think now if you compare Hong Kong or, or other cities like Hong Kong now versus, let's say, 10 years ago, five years ago, I mean, today we are all digital. I mean, your payment, you know, you hardly use the cash. You pay, you pay digitally. And, uh, and basically, uh, for a virtual bank like, our, like, 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 like the, the one that I'm, I'm part of, uh, we are offering you know, financial services totally on your mobile phone. That means that you can uh, do payment, you can do deposit, you can do uh, financial services on the phone. I think it, mean, it really means that you tr transform your life. You know, everything's become digital. Um, so that's uh, I mean, something that you could not imagine uh, just uh, you know, a few years ago. Okay, how about you, Dr. Lam? Well, um, I agree with uh, Professor Chan. I, th I think um, fintech here in Hong Kong is quite exciting. Um, uh, financial services account for uh, about 20% of our GDP, so it's a core business of Hong Kong. Uh, it's, un it's been undergoing uh, digital transformation in a big way. COVID-19 challenge now uh, sees even faster and complete digital transformation. So um, we are strengthening our core business and the international financial center capabilities of Hong Kong uh, accordingly will be much more enhanced. So uh, we look forward to even more business opportunities after COVID-19. So actually our two star speakers are very special because uh, yeah, like Professor Chan can re actually represent ex-government, mm -hmm. a banker, and also academic, <laughs> and also our Dr. Lam can represent the supply chain of the whole fintech ecosystem from investor through to the yeah, supply mm -hmm. of the of the tech firms, mm. and also the regional perspective. So um, a lot of times when we talk about fintech, so we talk about financial services company can go into the technology because using of the technology to really uh, offer better services. And also we are talking about um, those uh, online shopping malls can really yeah, partner with a lot of uh, mm -hmm. banking institutions to offer financial product as well. So it's a little bit bird nowadays. And uh, a lot of uh, customer related um, uh, journey related uh, 
um, uh, application, technology application we are seeing now. So anything of uh, the more groundbreaking or transformational mm. uh, technology applications or use cases that you think are really yeah, benefiting the markets? Well, obviously, I think uh, in terms of the whole uh, fintech uh, revolution, I think the digital payment is uh, certainly the most important, in my mind, the most important breakthrough. Um, and then once you have digital payment, uh, you also have uh, online lending, uh, you know, uh, different kind of financial service being offered online. Now, traditionally, we thought about financial service being, you know, the, you know offered by you know, a bank. Um, and, and payment is by cash or, or something, or credit card and so on. So now, you know, if with FinTech, you're really seeing uh, the emergence of a different kind of players, uh, which focus on one aspect, two aspects, or in, in terms of financial services, and try to really, really tear apart what, what, what finance means, and offering financial services in a very competitive uh, and uh, compelling way. And the way they offer it is by technology, by data, by tying up those services with your daily life. And that's really most compelling. Um, so I think in terms of the technology, I think of obviously the, the, uh, the whole digital payment coupled with the cybersecurity, uh, the artificial intelligence, uh, which can handle big data, they allow financial service firms to, uh, to offer financial service tailor-made to individuals. I think that's really, um, to me, that's really a transformational technology. Yeah, agree, absolutely agree. How about Dr. Lam? Well, <coughs> in uh, Hong Kong, we've seen, um, uh, I'd like to add a uh, few examples to uh, Professor Chan's uh, um, examples now. Uh, you can see we have insurance, virtual insurance, we have virtual banking. Uh, we also are seeing uh, some so-called reg tech, you know, regulatory technology coming mm. up. You know, you, because Hong Kong uh, has a very good uh, legal system mm. and uh, very excellent protection for intellectual property. Mm. Uh, we also stress integrity and governance, so it's ideal for red tech mm -hmm. and mm. also ideal for wealth tech. Uh, you can see that the whole of China, including mm. the Greater Bay Area and Hong Kong, we see the emergence of this largest middle class in the world. Mm. And all of them want to you know, provide for a better uh, investment future for their family. And how do they do that? Um, we see a lot of uh, democrat, democrat, uh, democratizing of mm -hmm. private banking, for example, yeah, yeah. asset management, wealth management, can do investment one dollar, management. Yeah. One dollar investment. To our uh, uh, normal, regular families rather than the richest in yep. society. Mm -hmm. So very exciting. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. And we also see a lot of data innovations mm. because uh, fintech is all about data no innovation. Yep. Like insurance, you have a lot of dormant data, mm -hmm. but now with digital technology, the data uh, will be given live, mm. and better customer service can be offered, and we can better serve the underbanked and underinsured. Mm. You know, not just in Hong Kong, yep. but in the region, uh, across the world as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Absolutely agree, and also uh, one recent example which I have seen in the market, which is happening, it's uh, uh, we talk about SMEs or the underserved financing. So now uh, both the government or actually, actually the industry has been uh, forming groups to discuss uh, how can we better use of the data available in the market. Mm -hmm. So for example, the SME, mm -hmm. when they want to get financing products, but it's actually very difficult for them to get because they don't have a good, very good balance sheet, P&L, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and also the financial statements. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what uh, the market is doing is try to yeah, uh, integrate all sort of uh, alternative data, say for example, the payment information, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. custom declaration information. Yeah. If uh, those yep. data can be really um, integrated and then to help the financial institution to better understand the yeah. credit history of the of the potential customer, mm -hmm. this is actually using of the FinTech technology to really better serve the yeah. The, the target customer. Mm -hmm. So it is something that is transforming the yep. industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, another thing is um, when we talk about uh, virtual bank, mm -hmm. okay, for example. So um, in the last year, uh, so we have done a digital banking survey, customer mm -hmm. banking survey. So in the Hong Kong, we interviewed 1,500 customers, mm -hmm. okay. So it's really uh, quite a sizable pool. And then we asked them, okay, are you happy with your current banking services? And then, uh, not probably not surprisingly, over 80% of those respondents 
survey respondents, they have indicated that uh, actually uh, I feel frustration or I have uh, at least one issue on my using of the banking services. Mm -hmm. I online experience is not too well. Uh, they are not able to be given a financial, a holistic view of the financial information, the product, or they are actually yeah, not having uh, tools to really analyze or meet their personalized financial goals. Uh, and then they want some innovation in the market mm -hmm. to happen. And uh, as a virtual banker, so what mm -hmm. do you see the products to be offered by the virtual bank, which can be really transforming the industry? So any insights yeah. or views for you to well, share with us? Yeah, I think I, think I also uh, read the survey done mm -hmm. by uh, your, your PwC, that's a really great, very good survey. Uh, we also did our own consumer research. We talked to a lot of uh, you know, uh, customers in our demographic uh, segment. And I think we, our conclusions are very similar to, to, to the one that you, you, know, you draw. Number one, I think Hong Kong, um, in, in the Hong Kong customers are very digitally savvy. Uh, this is a very digital society. People really want to try different kind of uh, financial service, different means of uh, getting financial ser so services. Uh, and the pain points that you mentioned uh, is, uh, are real. Uh, people are, are not happy about uh, being, um, you know, being fed with products. They want to have a little bit more control on their financial journey. Uh, what kind of financial service they want. They want, a more, they want to have uh, more information. A lot of the uh, consumers basically would like to have better access to, uh, to wealth good, good wealth management products. Um, they want to have uh, more information about the various uh, fine offerings. So I think it's basically um, the proposition of a digital bank like Relab Bank is that we, we want to really be part of their digital journey um, by, uh, by offering uh, financial services that are very easy to, to access on the phone, uh, which we really want to be their partner. So they can use our phone to pay, to do payment, they can, you know, with the payment we can we can, we can uh, pro provide information uh, for the customers so they can uh, reach their goal of uh, saving. Uh, they, can, they, they can reach their goal of financial uh, investment. So I think the proposition for us is that we would like to be uh, providing those services at a very low cost. Uh, being a digital bank, uh, I think we can offer services at low cost because we don't have the, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the brick and mortar. So, and I think more importantly, I think it's the customer experience uh, that we must offer that is really truly unique uh, to, to, you know, to, to, the, to the market. And, and, and by, by doing, in, in doing that, we're trying to really uh, be, be the partner, uh, be there you know, with every day uh, and every hour with them so that, so that we can understand what their needs are. Then we can offer solutions like you know, uh, wealth management or insurance or, or whatnot to them. So basically the key message is to offer tailored financial services mm -hmm. so that the customer can feel the love by the bank. Yes, <laughs> yes, well, okay. yes. Good, very good. And then, uh, how about the ecosystem? Because uh, banks or financial services players are no longer just working alone. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of uh, the institutions are really look into, yeah, really partner with uh, those uh, non-financial service company, either the client acquisition or yeah, really getting a lot of data for providing better services. So what are the tips that you may yeah, provide to our audience about yeah, to build a successful ecosystem? Well, uh, <laughs> I must say the ecosystem is really our secret <laughs> sauce um, in Hong Kong. As I, I mentioned earlier, we are an uh, uh, international financial center and here to do fintech, we have been building um, an ecosystem for fintech development, uh, including all the ingredients to help all the startups, you know, uh, to foster them, uh, to help them succeed. Uh, we have the big tech people, uh, all, the, all the top providers of blockchain, AI, cybersecurity can be found, let's say, at Cyberport, where we have 1,600 tech companies and mm. startups. In Hong Kong, we have 600 fintech companies, and 400 of them are in Cyberport, for example. So when you come to, when you come to Cyberport, you are coming to the mm. fintech department store. So we have everything there. <laughs> yeah. Superstore. Yeah. And next, next door is the biggest lab for fintech services. Mm. That's the Greater Bay Area. Mm. We are only 14 minutes away mm. from mm. Shenzhen by high-speed rail. So 
this is the best place for fintech and the ecosystem is the key because uh, if you can come up with innovative solutions that can solve problems in the, in the industry, that can help consumers and corporates alike, you have the biggest lab market available in front of you. Mm. You, can, you, you, you can go to you know, the best stage on earth uh, to flex your muscles, to show your products mm. and to build revenues. Dr. Lam, I know that you are also very passionate in terms of digital zero because uh, Hong Kong is just so mm -hmm. a small place so people should yeah, open mm -hmm. their eye to the rest of the region so, and also a lot of countries have been yeah, really developing their fintech so in your mind, so what do you think Hong Kong should play its role in terms of the fintech development in the region and also yeah, is there any other countries that uh, yeah, we can partner with and then to really promote more the fintech? Well, uh, the zero is so romantic <laughs> and also commercial. Uh, now the new zero is really exciting. And it's not just the physical zero, it's actually the virtual zero as well that is even more exciting. So when uh, you talk about digital zero, we actually uh, imagine, we can imagine the many opportunities given to uh, our SMEs, for example to bring their products and services to new markets around the world. You know, for example, uh, we have an insure tech company in Hong Kong, a cyberport, uh, who is already exporting their insure tech kitchen or engine room mm -hmm. uh, to one of the top uh, countries in Southeast Asia. And we have an uh, e-payment company that is operating, already operating in 14 different markets using Hong Kong as a hub. And then we have people doing uh, e-payment. We have people who handle complex uh, foreign exchange problems, uh, who can handle unpaid invoices, factoring solutions, and so on. So all of these are going out in a big way, using Hong Kong as a launching pad. Uh, so coming to Hong Kong means uh, having immediate access to fintech markets in this most fascinating region called Asia. Uh, that's the digital silk road, mm. is opportunities. Right, technology exporting, so one key message. And Working with young people as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> and also women. A lot of women in Asia, because of their duty as mother, as wife, mm. as daughter, they stay home. Sometimes they don't have the same opportunities as men. And with digital technology, with fintech, they can reach out. Mm -hmm. They can do more. They can be part of the economic growth. Mm. And uh, they are half of, half of us. Mm. You know? So mm -hmm. I think with the fintech, we can do a, a lot more uh, in the area of uh, uh, in inclusiveness as well. Right. Yeah, I want to I want to add a point here. I think I think George is very right. I mean, Hong Kong has a lot to offer uh, to the to the uh, surrounding region, and uh, because a lot of the uh, basic element of fintech is really um, you know include you know expanding financial inclusion. Mm. So I mean, do very well. But another advantage for Hong Kong is that Hong Kong is a very competitive but uh, hugely profitable banking market. Mm. I mean, in Hong Kong has a lot of banking assets. Hong Kong people are pretty wealthy you know, by, by, any, by any ways of uh, measurement. And so, so when you think about a fintech solution offer in Hong Kong, it has to be very competitive. Mm. It has to satisfy the people in Hong Kong who are already very you know, demanding in terms of what kind of level of service they want. So I think so in, if you succeed in Hong Kong uh, fintech, it must be quite good. <laughs> <laughs> because you must, be, must be quite innovative and coming up with real solutions to solve uh, some uh, difficult problems. And then you're able to satisfy the regulatories and yeah, then you satisfy the Hong Kong very top regulators. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Hong Kong is a very good test bed for, for a lot of the kind of technology and application. I think that's really put Hong Kong well, to be very different. Uh, Professor Chan, totally agree. Yeah. Can I add one point about yep. the regulators? Sure. I think we also have one of the best regulatory teams in the world here, yeah. mm -hmm. looking at how we actually facilitate mm -hmm. you know, market development mm -hmm. and also uh, transformation mm -hmm. using technology mm -hmm. and promoting innovation. So, um, you know, fintech cannot be successful unless you have uh, a regulatory environment that mm -hmm. uh, allows for innovation mm -hmm. and 
and with uh, constant reform in policies. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, recently, uh, uh, we have seen the introduction of uh, guidance and so on in terms of digital assets, virtual assets. Mm -hmm. So that, that is an important step forward because mm -hmm. Hong Kong is already a leading international asset management mm -hmm. center. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are well positioned to become mm -hmm. a digital mm -hmm. asset mm -hmm. management center mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are very excited. Uh, my, my point to friends around the world is mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's join forces, mm -hmm. work together mm -hmm. to, um, uh, to develop more innovative mm -hmm. solutions. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So totally agree. Since the 2008, the financial crisis, mm -hmm. okay, and I think yeah, most places in the world, around the world, actually the regulators are really yeah, pushing up their bar in terms of the, the regulations are more getting more stringent. Uh, I think Hong Kong is uh, not, not alone, also a lot of other countries. Mm -hmm. But then I think in terms of another aspect, actually uh, what I'm seeing in Hong Kong is uh, the regulators are already doing quite a lot in terms of really promoting FinTech, the digital asset regulation that you mm -hmm. talk, just talked about, and then um, the more recent yeah, introduction of the virtual banking license, virtual mm -hmm. insurance mm -hmm. license, and also yeah, all sort of uh, open API, whatever, technology initiative that mm -hmm. we are seeing. So I think, yeah, also uh, for the industry and also the regulator are actually working hand in hand in yes. terms mm -hmm. of making the initiative to be really happen. So I think, yeah, this is I think what I, I think in my, in my mind, what makes Hong Kong FinTech very unique is that uh, we don't just sit there and try to really chase some kind of, uh, you know, FinTech fad or fin FinTech fashion. We actually trying to solve real problems. Mm -hmm. So I think that really uh, comes down to on the regulatory uh, approach, you know, to, uh, to FinTech innovation. You see that, the, you know, as with both the Hong Kong MA, the SFC and so on, and the insurance regulator and so mm -hmm. on, they work with industry. They, they open sandbox uh, so for the industry to come in and they try to work out some solutions uh, for, for real problems. So I think that's what makes Hong Kong FinTech unique because we are actually solving some, some interesting problems uh, that, the people, that yeah. affect people's lives. Yeah, so we are talking about the mm -hmm. good foundation which yeah. Hong Kong has, mm -hmm. but of course there are also challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of my clients uh, actually yeah, commented, ah, it's actually quite difficult to get good financial plus technology talent in Hong Kong mm -hmm. uh, because Hong Kong is just, just so small. And then they have been hiring people from Shenzhen, from Taiwan mm -hmm. to do blockchain programming, mm -hmm. say for example. So what do you think about, okay, Hong Kong is really shortage in the shortage of the technology talent. And if that is the case, how we can uh, resolve mm -hmm. this issue? Very good question. But uh, I must say that Hong Kong is uh, very uh, you know, uh, well positioned because we are already a, a leading international financial mm. center, uh, uh, you know, and we are doing fintech in a big way as well. Mm. So we, we do have uh, a talent pool that we can draw from, mm -hmm. but not mm. enough, yep. not enough. That's why uh, Cyberport is now mm. uh, leveraging uh, help from the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, for example to develop more fintech practitioners mm. uh, for, for our IFC. And we, we are targeting to develop, you know, 2,000 mm. people mm. In, in the not too distant future. And we will add more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, because fintech, by nature, is cross-border, it's global. Mm -hmm. So we also draw talents, top talents from around the world, mm. including New York City and London, uh, you know, wherever mm. uh, we can work with. Uh, at the same time, uh, talents are all, you know, exchangeable as well. Mm. So I think this is a very good global development, actually. Uh, over here, uh, in terms of talents, uh, we see a lot of opportunities in data science, for mm. example, in cybersecurity, yep. uh, cloud computing mm -hmm. also. We see the convergence of fin and tech. Mm -hmm. When you talk to a bank, you know, mm -hmm. they say they are tech companies. Now. Mm -hmm. And we go to a tech team, they say they are virtual yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see that convergence, and I see more tech people going into the government mm -hmm. to provide policy mm -hmm. support, you know, in terms of development, new policy, and so on. Mm -hmm. And I also see in the future, uh, tech people will mm -hmm. become, you know, CEO of banks and insurance companies mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. asset management firms. It's already happening. Already happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so talent. The key is talent, and it's mm. still talent, talent, talent. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. We need to do more. Definitely, mm -hmm. and also because of the Hong Kong is leading the Greater Bay Area, actually a lot of talent pool, we can just not sourcing from Hong Kong, 
but can sure. also source uh, from Beijing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, that's the advantage of Hong Kong. Uh, we only, of course, in Hong Kong, we got to develop our own talent more, but, it, but Hong Kong has access to all the great ta the talent pool in the Greater Bay Area. We let Bank, uh, actually, we have, uh, we have a team uh, in Sunjun uh, that belongs to, put to the Relap Group. So we actually, you know, um, a lot of technology uh, uh, support can, can come from Sunjun. I mean, for, mm -hmm. we are not the only example. I think a lot of Hong Kong players have the same similar structure. Mm -hmm. So another question, I think that's bad for you, uh, mm -hmm. Professor Chen, is about, of course, when we talk about talent, we talk about people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, we can, it can also come with challenges. Yes. How you can integrate the tech talent and also the financial services? As you know, yeah, mm. bankers are really highly regulated industry, working in a highly regulated industry, and then they've been so traditional. Mm. But those are tech companies or the tech people are really innovative. How are you going to integrate the two in your organization? I'm, I'm sure that uh, mm -hmm. this kind of challenges will come very often. Well, I, I think you definitely it's, a, it's an interesting question. Um, uh, I think for, for, a, for a virtual bank uh, like us in Hong Kong, uh, we, yes, we have a lot of tech, uh, and we are a tech company, we have a lot of tech people and so on, and our DNA is very technology. Uh, on the other hand, we are a bank. So we are regulated like a bank. You know, in fact, the, the, the beauty about Hong Kong regulation is that a virtual bank is just a bank. Mm -hmm. So with all kinds of the compliance uh, regulation, they are no different from a, a traditional bank. Um, so that means that when, when we are building up, you know, naturally we have a lot, you know, we, we rely on technology, and that's mm -hmm. our proposition. Uh, but we also attract people who come to us because they want to buy into mm -hmm. our technology vision. So. So the, the people who come in, either you know, either they're traditional banker or or, or they're the compliance people, they buy into a virtual bank vision. Now, that's the number one. And and as we develop, you know, as we offer products, I'm sure that there will be times where we have to we have to really bring people together. You mm. know, and one of the strong one of the strengths of our of our organization is that we believe in the culture. Mm. We have we are very very much a culture driven organization. So, so, and that's one way we can actually, um, you know, um, Attract blend people, people in. Yeah. So when they come in, they, they have to be, you know, they have to be subscribing to the culture, and we keep on talking, talking about it, and doing it all the time. Mm. Uh, I think culture is can be built, uh, and can be sustained, mm -hmm. but certainly that, that requires a lot of commitment from the from the to not only the top management from all the way down in organization. Yeah, and we are doing it. Yeah, there's also, I think that's also the reason why, like the regulators, uh, not only Hong Kong, but a lot mm -hmm. of, in a lot of countries has been introducing those virtual bank, virtual insurance mm -hmm. licenses, mm -hmm. simply because uh, they want, yeah, to have some newcomers to have a catfish effect. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah, stimulate the system to be innovative and then promote digital services, innovative services. Mm -hmm. I think there's a really good way. So otherwise, if uh, there is no way for them to join together, yes. how the innovation could happen? So, I think I think Hong Kong uh, virtual bank uh, policy, I mean, of course, is only it's, it's quite new. But I think in, in my mind, it means that uh, there is a very uh, uh, well-regulated environment that allows you to do innovations, mm -hmm. so that you know, so the consumers feel that protected. Yep. Uh, and, and allowing the, the bankers and technology people to sit together and try to work on something new. Mm. I think that's really, a, a, it is a very truly a safe experiment. Mm. I agree, yeah. I agree. I think it's truly a two-way street as well. Mm. Uh, for example, when we talk about the ecosystem strategy, mm. a cyber port, one of the key uh, elements is uh, this green channel and mm. this uh, communication link with our regulatory agency mm. so that our aspiring fintech entrepreneurs, mm. you know, they can innovate with mm. some guidance and with some policy feedback as well, mm. you know. So, uh, because in fintech, whenever you innovate, you have only two possibilities. One right, is right. you break the law because everything is so well regulated. Mm. Or you step into a gray area, mm. opportunity, mm. and you need some guidance, mm. right? And the feedback is useful and the guidance is useful. Right. And so, uh, we need that uh, dialogue, that two-way street, and I think now is really the opportunity mm -hmm. for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see that our young entrepreneurs are very mindful of the need for compliance. Mm -hmm. And they're also now seeing more opportunities to mm -hmm. provide good ideas mm -hmm. for law reform mm -hmm. and for new regulations mm -hmm. that can help the market. 
-hmm. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. Just to finish our discussion on the talent and people. So today, so we are now having a webinar, not seminar, mm -hmm. and also we are putting on masks because of the COVID. <laughs> still, yeah, can't go away at the moment. Uh, and uh, one interesting point that uh, we are seeing our clients are uh, changing their strategy. It's uh, okay in the past they have been hiring people just from Hong Kong, but now yeah, because mm. a lot of our people is an expert of web conferencing. So today, mm -hmm. so we can do remote conferences, remote interviews, so mm -hmm, basically mm -hmm. in an instant manner. So uh, so when we talk about talent acquisition, it's not just can from Hong Kong, but yeah, you can uh, have talent from all over the world, hiring people all over the world. It can also help with the cost reduction and also yeah, have a better chance of uh, getting the right talent. Mm -hmm, so it's mm -hmm. uh, changing mm -hmm. quite a lot in the mm -hmm. market. And also I, I, I know that uh, in terms of the investor appetite, so Dr. Lam, you have uh, kind of uh, some sharing with us in terms of a uh, changing of the investor appetite, yeah. so which can may help the fintech industry in Hong Kong, right? Well, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I think now uh, uh, investment in the momentum of investment into fintech is very strong now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when COVID-19 started, mm -hmm. you know, investors in general mm -hmm. uh, are saying, well, let's wait and see. But the more they see, the mm -hmm. more they see that this is, the whole world is mm -hmm. going digital. Yes. Yep. So yep. digital transformation is no longer a nice to have mm -hmm. kind of agenda item. Yep. It is a must do mm -hmm. and immediately must, must be done. So I think we have a golden opportunity here. Uh, we can see that in Hong Kong, the growth of FinTech investment and the growth of FinTech firms mm -hmm. also very fast. Uh, just last year alone, FinTech adoption rate you know, mm. in Hong Kong by Hong Kong consumer mm. reached 67%. Mm. Mm. You know, from 32%, you're talking more than doubling. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and I think the trend is up and up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very optimistic. Now, the key now is because on the one hand, we try to innovate and try to develop more and fast. On the other hand, as Professor Chen said, we are rock solid in terms of governance mm. and regulations mm. yep. and compliance culture, corporate culture and all that. I, I think we need to have both. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and our fintech entrepreneurs, when they have tiny companies, they already practice CSR and you know, understand compliance and respect the law and so on. When they become unicorns, uh, they will be performing even better mm. you know, because it's all about you know, playing by the rules of the game. Mm. Uh, so I, I think uh, I'm very optimistic about, you know, uh, the fintech uh, development scene in Hong Kong mm -hmm. and in the region. Right. Mm -hmm. And also adding on the GBA element, the Greater Bay Area is even more exciting, right? Very mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. Hong Kong is just yeah. like 7 million people. Yep. But then the Greater Bay Area, we have 10 times more. Yep. 70 mm -hmm. million people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the last year, the Chinese government has issued the, um, what they call GBA Outline Development Plan. Mm -hmm. And also, early this year, the circular number 95 mm -hmm. has been issued by the Chinese regulators mm -hmm. to really um, promote the internationalization of the renminbi by leverage on the GBA, uh, facilitation of the trade and investment across the region, and also, of course, the financial sector. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, all sort of this uh, are happening, mm -hmm. uh, reaffirming the key mm -hmm. messages of the Chinese government's uh, mm -hmm. strong uh, support to the GBA mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. And also in June, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. the Wealth Management Connect, cross-border Wealth Management Connect has been issued, yeah. the, 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 the notice. Now this uh, make the whole industry mm -hmm. exciting in mm -hmm. terms of, uh, especially for the banks or the uh, wealth manager to be mm -hmm. able to have a South Bank yeah, investment opportunities mm -hmm. uh, from the from the North uh, mainland Chinese. Mm -hmm. So, Professor Chen, how do you think about a summary of the uh, GBA development so far, and also the what are you seeing about the opportunities for the financial services industry? Well, I think you make a uh, quick description about what what really happened. Um, if I can um, just draw mm -hmm. our attention a little bit to the rationale. Mm. I think the, you know uh, maybe <laughs> being a former government official, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think about policy and so on. You know that kind of rationale. I think I think Greater Bay Area is a very important uh, development strategy for China. Uh, I think and then and Greater Bay Area is supposed to be a outward-looking, a, uh, a a economic uh, powerhouse 
uh, that really uh, transforms you know, the, whole, the whole economy. And, and Greater Bay Area includes Hong Kong and Macau. And Hong Kong being an international financial center, that in, in that context, finance is very important. Mm. And the development of finance and, that, and fintech is a very important part of this whole Greater Bay Area blueprint. Uh, and it was, as uh, you mentioned, uh, when the, when the, uh, when the, when the uh, banking regulator come up with the whole blueprint, it confirms that, you know, that, that, that you know, China uh, is very committed to, uh, to seeing more fintech and financial market integration between the two, between Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area. So I think the policy rationale is very strong, and all the signals uh, are from, the, from the central government is that this is going to go, gonna, gonna go, go forward. Now, of course, back to reality, now, we, also, we, we do understand that when you talk about this kind of uh, policy breakthrough, it requires a lot of thoughts, uh, details, implementation, attention to you know, uh, all kinds of uh, issues. Mm. Uh, if I draw your attention to, to back to the earliest kind of link, uh, the, the Shanghai Hong Kong stock market link mm. or the Shenzhen Hong Kong stock market link, that took many years mm. you know, to, to really uh, come into fruition. And they was, talking, they was talking about two, mark, two stock market link, which is much more easy to regulate and to oversee. Now, when you, when you talk about Greater Bay Area uh, versus, Hong, versus, Hong, versus Hong Kong uh, financial market uh, integration, uh, let's say take Wealth Management Connect, for example, it requires you know, uh, some kind of structure that you can actually monitor and uh, provide good regulation for, for, for tens of thousands or millions of people using this facility. So it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous problem. So, so I, think, I think, number one, I think the direction is very clear. The goal is very clear. It will happen, uh, uh, subject to some implementation uh, that will make, make it uh, robust and, uh, and so that the regulatory uh, goals can be achieved. Uh, and I think, that's, uh, I think that's a tremendous opportunity for Hong Kong because we will be the only one, only place that can connect to the wealth management uh, business uh, on the mainland China. So I feel I, I think the Hong Kong right is very excited about okay, this. Yeah. Uh, but when you when you mentioned earlier, of course the Hong Kong players are very looking forward to southbound investment, meaning mm. that you know the the, the, the the Greater Bay Area domestic Chinese residents investing in Hong Kong wealth management products. Of course, we are very excited about that. But let me also point out that the northbound can be also very exciting. Mm. Uh, I, I, I don't want to undermine and under, underestimate that because the, there are a lot of wealth management, wealth management products. Uh, they are available on the, on the north in RMB. That could be very variable for, for the Hong Kong investors mm. and international investors. I can see that to be really good business. Mm. And uh, so when I think about this kind of wealth, man, wealth management connect, my attention is always on the both sides. You know, how can mm. we make everyone you know, come out ahead you know, yeah. in this kind of scheme? Absolutely agree. So, um, Dr. Lam, anything you want to share? Uh, I, I, I agree um, uh, with uh, Professor Chan. And I, I think the GBA is really a, a golden opportunity. Mm. It is uh, the world's next Silicon Valley and mm. much, much more mm. because we have all the ingredients of success here. Mm. Um, we have superb infrastructure, uh, transport system, you know, that can link 70 million people within one hour. Mm. So nowhere you can find that. And uh, this is also important to point out that we have a rock solid real economy mm. as well. Because you cannot just do fintech. The other side is the real economy. Yeah. Mm. You need both. Yeah. yeah. And we have both. Mm. So that's why fintech will, will flourish. Because mm. we have a real economy that is growing as well. Uh, so I'm very excited by the prospects, and all of our startups in Hong Kong are now, you know, thinking about Greater Bay, acting Greater Bay uh, at birth, mm. rather than saying, well, let's do something here first, and then when we grow up a, a little bit, then we mm. venture out, uh, venture out to the Greater Bay area in baby steps. Uh, no, you know, we think Greater Bay right away. In fact, we are born for the Greater Bay and <laughs> the digital silk road. <laughs> That's the mindset. So, uh, um, well, uh, I look forward to welcoming mm. friends and talents and investors mm. from around the world mm. to come to Hong Kong. Uh, we see a lot more VCs and, uh, um, in general, risk capital and smart money flowing into Hong Kong. One last reason I want to say is to do fintech or to do investment, 
you need not just integrity, governance, rule of law, and all that. You also you know, need stability and security, and we have that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also in terms of technology readiness, as uh, my clients told me, actually the technology is ready mm -hmm. in terms of onboarding people mm -hmm. outside Hong Kong, like in the GBA. Yep. Just that the regulators, if uh, the implementation details are really fixed up, and then actually very fast. We have really that. We, we already have a lot of good work in EKYC, in yeah, EID, kind of onboarding. You know, so yeah. biometrics and I think technology is there. You're yeah. right. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it's just that, as Professor Chan said, uh, we, we need to do innovation, but at the same time, we have mm -hmm. to maintain governance and regulations yeah. mm -hmm. as well. So Definitely. how to strike that optimality, mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're getting there. Yeah. 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 Probably mm -hmm. one last topic before we can come into the question from the audience. So another hot topic is about the central bank digital currency. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in China, so a few months ago, they have announced that actually they are in the pilot testing of the retail digital currency mm -hmm. being an MCO like a cash. And uh, a few pilot cities has been identified like Shenzhen, like Shuzhou, uh, like Chengdu. So they mm -hmm. are already piloting the testing. Mm -hmm. And uh, versus in Hong Kong, so Hong Kong in 2017, so HKMA has uh, started the pilot study in terms of mm -hmm. issuing the CBDC central bank digital currency in Hong Kong. So mainly on the wholesale side, mm -hmm. uh, facilitate the cross-border payment. Yeah. And also in the last year, they have yeah, really partnered with the Bank of Thailand mm -hmm. in terms of really doing this uh, um, part of study and they mm -hmm. see how the two countries can really use that uh, to mm -hmm. uh, do the cross-border payment. So Professor Chen, what do you think about, is it a real business case in terms of uh, issuing retail CDBC or you are more uh, advocate the issuing of the wholesale based at CBDC? I think, I think they are serving very different purposes. Mm. Uh, when you talk about the wholesale uh, 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 digital currency, uh, that was really for the trade finance, settlement, and so on. Uh, but we know that in order to do that, uh, it's not just about currency. It's about also about the whole arrangement with uh, different players in the trade finance uh, side. So, um, so currency is only one part of the equation. Um, uh, but obviously, in terms of the um, implication uh, or, or impact, uh, I think the retail uh, digital currency will be huge, will be really uh, transformational. Now, uh, China is going ahead, experimenting with uh, some retail digital currency in, in the market. Uh, you, may, you may ask, why do we need that? You know, but we will see. We will see the market will tell you later on whether they, it will be truly be succe succeeding as a, as a means of payment. Um, so I, I, think, I, think, I think the whole world must be watching the, you know, what's being done in China now, because China is mm. taking a very bold step, you know, uh, instead of talking about what they're doing it, okay? Mm. Uh, now, I guess this is amazing, you know, it's going, we've got to watch how, how it will develop. Mm. And also when I see um, the current issue in the market is uh, when you do cross-border fund transfer, so international study research told us actually it can cost up to 7%. Mm. as a transaction cost mm -hmm. when you do cross-border fund transfer. Yep. And uh, it can yeah, really take a few days mm -hmm. for you to transfer money from one country to another mm -hmm. because of a lot of different sure. reasons, different time zone, yep. different yeah, costs. So in that case, actually, uh, to, from my perspective, mm -hmm. I think the, really the wholesale uh, CBDC can really mm -hmm. solve mm -hmm. a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. If uh, mm -hmm. the money can be transferred instantly mm -hmm. uh, and uh, without yeah, a lot of uh, clearance and also settlement sure. uh, to be involved in. Sure. So, and also it eliminate a lot of intermediaries. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. can really benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then how about, uh, Dr. Lam, do you think if uh, issuance of the CBDC is really a way to go, how do you think about Hong Kong should play the role and also what kind of countries uh, that uh, Hong Kong should partner with in terms of mm -hmm. making this happen? Yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, everything now, we, we're talking about entering the era of mm -hmm. digital economy. Mm -hmm. You know, the key is everything is going digital now. Mm. Uh, currency is no exception. Mm -hmm. So the one thing certain about currencies is that uh, they will be digital. Mm. It's a matter of time, uh, I think. Uh, but, but in here, uh, we can see that because uh, the involvement of central banks uh, is absolutely needed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, the, the steps, uh, as Professor Chen said, uh, are being taken are indeed very bold and exciting. Uh, 
mm. but even in these uh, steps, you, you can see that a lot of prudence uh, mm. and um, careful consideration mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. is being made by the authorities. Mm. So I think we will need some time there to, it's like making good wine, you mm. need time. Mm. Right? Mm. So mm -hmm. we, we are seeing that. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, digital uh, uh, assets, digital currency mm. interaction, uh, I, I'm very bullish because now we're talking about the virtual economy and the real economy, how to bridge them so that we have a better impact and enjoyment. One plus one equals to three. Uh, mm. One and one <laughs> is more than 11. Mm. Now, <laughs> let me do that. Now, uh, uh, the, the virtual assets are uh, are very exciting because uh, now, for example, in China, in the Greater Bay Area, we see a lot of good assets. But in order to improve or increase or release their liquidity, mm. we, we need digital assets mm. and we need digital asset trading and we need platforms and we need services. We need professional services support and Hong Kong can offer that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, absolutely agree. So, uh, obviously I cannot uh, pick every question to answer because uh, there are quite a lot of uh, questions. But uh, one of the questions is quite interesting. Um, talk about sustainability. And uh, some audience want to know, okay, how the using of the FinTech, of the big data or AI, and also in terms of the linkage to the sustainability, the ESG context in terms of FinTech, so this is quite interesting. Uh, first time for me to hear this mm. question. Mm. How to link up the few I and the insight? I never thought about that angle, but I a very quick, very quick thought would be that um, if you talk about digital finance, uh, number one, you have more data, mm. you have better monitoring, yeah. um, and also you can you have a good certification of what kind of activities under you know really going on. So when you think about the ESG side, I mean, you, know, I mean, you cannot you cannot fake it. You know, mm. you can with data and so on. You 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 you, f you know fully well. You know what mm. what's the financial activities being you know, being involved in. Mm. Because a lot of data has to be captured, mm -hmm. analyzed uh, to mm -hmm. produce the green report exactly. or whatever use cases. Right. I think that's uh, really interesting. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree uh, with Professor Chen again. I, I think uh, digital technology offers a lot of uh, support you know, and mm. opportunity to innovate. For example, the, the audit trail, the mm. uh, digital fingerprint, mm -hmm. uh, smart contracts, yeah. you name it, we have it. Yeah. The tools are there. Mm. I think mm -hmm. it's just a question of how to apply and how to have a lot of innovation. So the key here is just not technology, it's innovation as well. Mm -hmm. So innovation and technology. Uh, that is the direction that Hong Kong is moving in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I see a lot of developments uh, in, in this area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we already see some ESG investment platform, yep. uh, a cyber port, exactly. and we also uh, already see a lot of CSR related, uh, mm -hmm. compliance related, mm -hmm. green finance related right. startups mm -hmm. right. as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the trend is uh, promising. I yeah. think also maybe the attitude too. And when, and when society becomes digital, it's more conscious about being green. Yeah. yeah. And be, you know, being, being sustainable. I think the, really the cultures are very similar. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, green, clean. Yeah. And, uh, you know, impact. Thin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Everything. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, probably uh, another question is about the. Okay. Now, one of the questions is uh, the incumbent financial service payers, the traditional payers have been very profitable mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. and uh, they've been yeah, enjoying the profit from the wealthy, wealthy individuals and also the um, uh, large corporations mm -hmm. okay, in terms of offering their financial services. But uh, yeah, it seems that even though they don't innovate, they can really yeah, sustain for quite some time and mm -hmm. also enjoy the market share. Mm -hmm. uh, is that they are really not need, no need for them to really innovate and offer better financial services. Well, I think when you break down the profit made by the uh, the successful large banks, I mean they are they are they are they are they are all kinds of sources, right? So some is basically providing IPO, you know, some is providing a better market market making or restructuring and so on. And this this car, these are the kind of uh, 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 these are kind of uh, attributes or, or skills that they're, they're not uh, they're quite quite unique. Right. Mm. Um, 
So I don't believe the fintech uh, uh, revolution can chip into that kind of profit. Mm. Okay. I think uh, I think on the other hand, on the other hand, if you are a set, if you are a big uh, 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 private bank client, you are going to ask for maybe yes, I want the same products, I want the better products, and I want better access to the product and better pricing. Mm. So even for the for the larger private bank, they are also facing the the need for innovation and transformation because yeah. their clients are also have access to other kinds of uh, products. So I think, but on the, on the other hand, they, they are also, I mean, I see, I know a lot of them are digital, uh, mm. changing their, their, mm. their, their offering and make it, make it easy for them to interface with the clients. So they also face the same kind of uh, phenomenon. It's not a same, it's, it's not a typical FinTech companies that will challenge them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think among themselves, they're really trying to innovate. Mm. Um, on, on the other hand, I, I will not rule out the possibility that some FinTech players will also come in on the fringe mm, in some mm, aspect, you know, mm. providing some challenge to them as well. Yeah, right, definitely, absolutely. Mm. I mm. think, yeah, the, of course, I think the incumbent banks or the financial services players have been, yeah, so profitable. Mm -hmm. But then if uh, we are talking about the future is the tech, future is the innovation. Mm -hmm. If they're not innovating, so mm -hmm. how can they really yeah, mm -hmm. make sure that they, they can survive in the future? So I think that's really very important. Totally agree. Uh, no, it's just not in, in the banking industry. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. all, all it's sorts all of industry. Yeah. In the car industry, in the uh, you know healthcare industry, you can see mm. uh, so-called challenging firms, uh, challenger firms, you know, mm. are, are making waves. Mm. Uh, the uh, digital cars uh, providers are now worth more than mm. uh, all the traditional <laughs> car <laughs> providers added together and more. Mm. Uh, yes. And uh, so I think uh, this is a time when uh, one cannot just stay uh, complacent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only yeah. constant is change. Yeah. And the way to go is innovate. Change or die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important. Yeah. And uh, probably one last question, uh, because a lot of um, the audience have been asking about the regulator, oh. regulatory requirements, and also yeah, more stringent requirements than before. So as an ex-government official, mm -hmm. so what are your suggestions in terms of yeah, really if the government can do more or the regulator can do more to really help facilitate the industry to really help the well, development of the fintech? Well, speaking as an industry person now, I, I will <laughs> always say they can do more. <laughs> they can always do more. But to be fair, I think I think the uh, I would say to be fair, I think in in Hong Kong we face regulators who are very uh, who are very open. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know. There are, there are regulations and so on, they cannot change you know, um, quickly. You have to yeah. have a you know, proper consultation yeah. and consideration. Yeah. But I think what, in my mind, I think what's very important is that um, the regulators have a mindset of welcoming change and working with industry mm. to effect those changes. Uh, because you, know, you cannot have the, in, the industry or the, or, and the regulators sitting in their own silos. Mm. Then nothing will happen. I think, I think we should encourage them, and in fact Hong Kong is doing that successfully in my, in my view. Uh, that more interactions, so the industry can go to the regulators and present the problems, mm. and they, they, some of them cannot be solved, maybe perhaps you know, immediately, but some of them can be can be done over time. Mm. I think having that kind of openness is very important. I think also, uh, I would I would not I would not uh, suggest that the regulators should always you know, uh, as I said earlier, chase the the newest uh, fintech or what mm. technology fed. Mm. They should have a proper perspective. You know how do you protect consumers? How do you protect you know the market, mm. a, a, as a, as well as a, you know open openly interacting with the industry? Mm. Okay, uh, I, I think in Hong Kong, I mm. add, I like to add to the first chance summary as mm. the former minister. The, uh, I I think that we have a very good policy environment mm. uh, uh, for fintech. You look at Hong Kong. Uh, we over the past three years or so, we have been investing in more than a hundred billion dollars mm. you know in, in the innovation and technology sector the momentum is strong and will grow continue to grow and we see the interaction between the technology innovation technology bureau and the yeah. financial services and the treasury bureau very working very closely yeah. to help fintech develop and we have uh, other agency working together uh, as a united hong kong Inc. team like hong kong development council for example uh, we also have the Financial Services Development, Development Council that mm. uh, comes up with 
uh, good ideas from time mm. to time with input from the uh, industry practitioners. Uh, the list is long. Mm. So mm. I think the key is it's like a soccer team. We mm. have to play well together. Yeah. Mm. You know, we, we of course we need some uh, good uh, uh, you know uh, players, but mm. uh, from time to time. But it's a team effort. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think yeah. we do have that now. And I think Hong, Hong Kong also is pro, mar pro market. Um, historically, you know, we always be pro market. So when you, when you actually look at the regulators, um, their, their mandate, every one of them has a market development mm. in their objective. So that they cannot be just regulating. You know, you, you know it's written into the, the KOI, you know, KBI, they have, they have the you know, market development. Uh, so yeah. in, I think they take it very seriously. You know, each of the regulators I can, you know, I can, I can think of, they set their own their, their teams of doing this, you know, this job. Now maybe this Hong Kong, um, but that's 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 exactly how, how you know you've been working very well you know in the, in the yeah. past. Even in Hong Kong, another example is the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Yeah. Mm. We have the uh, fintech facilitation office mm. NFO, yeah. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. and that's one of the many examples. Mm -hmm. yeah. we need yeah. to work together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah, really insightful sharing of mm -hmm. today. So really mm -hmm. thanks a lot, Professor Chen, and Thank also you. Dr. Lam, mm -hmm. the insightful sharing t of today. Any one final word before we end this section? You want to? Well, I, I, I love, you know, <laughs> I just enjoy being here. I enjoy <laughs> sit, sitting uh, with you know, Gary and then my friend George. Yeah. And uh, the, the, you know, the more we talk, the more, the more I become excited about Hong <laughs> Kong, <laughs> the entire community. Yeah. I think we have, we have, we have, we have gone, we have, we have come a long way. And I think, uh, and I feel e excited uh, by, the, by the prospects we just talked about. I think mm. we, we can go even further. Uh, congratulations, uh, Professor Chan. You went from being a regulator to uh, now a fintech a banker, entrepreneur. A banker, a virtual <laughs> banker. You know, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> you lived the, bank, uh, the fintech transformation yeah. beautifully. But yeah. for my few, uh, one, one final point is mm. uh, I think we are in, the, w w in Hong Kong, in the middle of the Greater Bay Area and next to Southeast Asia, you know, with wonderful countries and markets like Thailand mm -hmm. and Indonesia and also nearby we have Japan and so on. Uh, it is the greatest fintech market that you can find. Mm. And with the Greater Bay Area next, to, next door to Hong Kong, we, Hong Kong is the, it's like the storefront. Mm -hmm. um, this is the best fintech lab on earth. Yeah. Mm. So if you are entrepreneurs in fintech, investors in fintech, or you know, top not tech people from around the world, Come here. Come here. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> warm welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, Professor Chen. So I think this is the end of the webinar. And uh, thank for everyone for joining this section. And I'm sure that uh, we have contributed to your understanding of the FinTech development of Hong Kong and also how Hong Kong may be a next place for you to invest. OK, I'm also very happy to, see uh, to, to say that uh, the 14th of uh, Asia Financial Forum will be held in the next January. Mm. And uh, I'm, I, I would really like to see you all there. And uh, for now, please stay on and watch a short video to recap uh, what was uh, discussed in the last year and what was showcased in the last year. Asian Financial Forum 2020, bringing together over 3,500 government, global, financial and business leaders. Amid challenging times, the forum theme was redefining growth, innovation, breakthrough, inclusiveness, the subject of the opening plenary session where the Thai Finance Minister tackled this in relation to the country's upcoming new stock exchange aimed at startups. Finding economic growth is very much uh, the core of our national development uh, strategy today. So I'm sure that there will be a lot of opportunities for uh, Hong Kong in terms of investors, private equities, venture caps, and also for our business operators, the SMEs, the smaller guys, the startups to connect. AFF 2020 was host to prominent speakers in the economic and financial worlds the former U.S. Federal Reserve Chair was keynote luncheon speaker on day one. 
addressing the policy framework of central banks looking forward to the coming year. I think the US economy is actually doing just fine right now. After raising interest rates toward a kind of neutral level, certainly they would be prepared to cut more um, if it seems to be necessary to keep the expansion going. There's been a trend over many decades all around the world for central banks to become independent and taken out of politics. But it's very unusual to have a president who criticizes the Fed as much as President Trump has. The day two luncheon keynote was delivered by the 2019 winner of the Nobel Prize for Economics, tackling the theme of financial inclusiveness. Financial markets for the, you know, the bottom half of the world's income distribution, probably more than that actually, the bottom 80%, really don't work very well. Mismatches of talent and capital in Asia can be addressed through the Belt and Road Initiative and Hong Kong can assist. Belt and Road Initiative, in a sense, is bringing people into the market. And that's, a, that's an extremely innovative idea. There is lots of missing opportunities in the financial markets. And Hong Kong is close by, especially to you know, a lot of the poorer parts of Asia. I do think that something would come out of it. Among panel discussions at AFF 2020 was one focusing on the evolution of global trade and supply chain finance, with inclusion and technology on the agenda to see a new period of global growth. Pretty clear that the rule book is being rewritten as we, as we sit here today. Uh, and certainly the job of Standard Chartered is just to try to find a way to continue to extract the, the, the value from for society, from global trade, without leaving quite so many people behind. There's the mechanics. Uh, once the trade is taking place, how do we make sure that it's happening as, as frictionlessly as possible? And that's a, whether it's using uh, blockchain for various forms of, of record keeping and, and transaction tracking, uh, or whether using other forms of technology. Bill Winters alluded beside the event to the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area blueprint for growth. The Greater Bay Area represents a fantastic opportunity for China, for Hong Kong, for Macau, really for the world to have this, this, this zone of 90 million plus people growing quickly with a, with a heavy technology component, with Hong Kong as a financial center, that's a fabulous opportunity. With opportunities for corporate connections through InnoTalks, the AFF deal flow matchmaking session, Global Investment Zone, and FinTech Showcase, delegates from around the world were able to reflect on business related to strategic planning. For the UAE, its investment and promotion and protection agreement of 2019 with Hong Kong is part of the plan. And we in the UAE are planning to develop further the financial services. And, and Hong Kong being a hub to that in the Far East, and a hub to really attract talents. Uh, we feel that this treaty really enhances the cooperation further. We have seen one of the sovereign will fund opening up their offices in Hong Kong, and we encourage the private sector to capitalize on this treaty as well. The Asian Financial Forum 2020, living up to expectations for redefining economic growth. I think this is a real platform that connects the business with the talented people. I think this is the real benefit of participation. The dynamism, you know, that people are vibrant and the business uh, opportunities that can occur during this uh, particular week.